is my favorite icebreaker activity. I call it the polar bear and fish inquiry activity. I have used it successfully, as I said, from grades eight up to grade 12. And it's interesting to see how different ages kind of tackle this, um, but it's totally applicable for any of them. So what is this activity? I throw up this slide and I tell them, polar bears hunt in pairs and they sit around holes in the ice. And they sit around holes in the ice because fish hang out near the holes. And then I say, your task is to basically solve this puzzle. In your small groups, you're going to have three dice. You're going to roll the dice and I'm gonna come around to each group and I'm gonna look at your dice and tell you how many bears you have and how many fish you have. You're going to get a whiteboard or scrap paper to make some notes, um, but your goal is to figure out the rules. So you're figuring out how I'm looking at the dice and how I know how many bears and fish you have. And I will explain to you in a minute how I know how many bears and fish that you have. Um, it's not too tough. It does take a little bit of mental math, but you can do it, trust me. So once I've given them that little introduction, I say, okay, this is your task. You're going to be working in groups. And then I put them in groups, usually just with the people around them, groups of three, ideally, sometimes four. I give each small group a whiteboard or scrap paper, and I give them three dice. They're going to roll the dice and I'm going to circulate and I'm going to keep going from group to group. And they, this will go on and on. So they'll do many, many rolls. And then I'll come around, I'll look at their dice and I'll tell them how many bears and how many fish they have. And I leave this slide up and I say, remember polar bears hunt in pairs around ice because fish like to hang out around the holes. So I'm going to roll the dice and I'm going to go through how to figure out how many polar bears and how many fish you have. Okay, so we have five, five, and six. So I can look at this and I can say, you have eight polar bears and four fish. Now, how do I know that? Okay, remember, polar bears like to hunt in pairs around holes. So when you're looking at these dice, the first thing that you can remember is you can completely ignore all even numbers. So the six is even, we actually don't have to worry about that. I'm gonna pull that out of the way. Now, the hole in the ice that I'm talking about is represented by this center pip, okay? So the five has a hole in the middle. There it is, right? If you're looking at that six, there's no center pip, so there's no hole in the ice. So again, we can ignore all even numbers because they're spaced out that way. Now, polar bears like to hunt in pairs. So that means that this is one pair of polar bears. This is the other pair of polar bears. So. For a five, we have four polar bears. And because we have two fives, that means we have four plus four equals eight polar bears. Now, for the fish. Remember, the fish like to hang out near the holes. So the visual of this is that the fish are gonna be under the ice. If you actually flip over um, any standard dice, the two sides opposite each other, equals seven, okay? So we have the five right opposite that, if you flip it over, is a two because five plus two equals seven. So understanding that relationship that the opposite sides add up to seven, you can figure out how many fish there are. So if I'm looking at a, at a five, I know, okay, seven minus five is two. So every five is going to be two fish and we have two of those, so there are four fish. So one more time. This was the roll. Ignore this. We have four polar bears on each of these dies, so a total of eight polar bears, and two fish under each of these dies. So we have four fish. Eight polar bears, four fish. Let's do another roll. Okay, we have six, six, five. So again, we're ignoring the sixes, easy peasy. And we already just had a five, so that should be easy. Four polar bears, two fish. Of course, we're not telling kids that we're ignoring the even numbers. They figure that out. Okay, this is an interesting one. So we have one, five, and a four. Again, we're ignoring this four, so I don't even have to look at that. Now I'm looking, we have a five, so we know that's four polar bears. And the one just represents a hole. So we have a hole, but no polar bears are fishing around it right now. So here, with this combination for the three dice, we have four polar bears. We have two fish from this five 
And remember, fish like to hang out near the holes. It doesn't matter that there's no polar bears. And the opposite side of a one is a six. So every one actually has six fish plus the two fish from this five. So that means we have eight fish. So four polar bears, eight fish total. And we totally ignore the all even numbers. Let's do another one. I'll give you a sec to see if you can figure it out. Okay, so we have a two, a four, and a one. Can you figure out how many polar bears there are and how many fish? This is an interesting one because there are actually no polar bears because we have two even numbers and a one. But there are six fish because the one still has a hole and the opposite of that is six. So this rule would be no polar bears, six fish. Another interesting one. Okay, so we're ignoring those fours. We know it's four polar bears, two fish because we're just looking at the five. What students will often end up doing, some of the things that get them kind of to the next level of thinking is they will roll by chance all even numbers. Whenever it's all even numbers, it's no polar bears, no fish. So that's really interesting to them and often they'll make that connection. Another thing that they'll do is they'll change their dice. And I don't tell them that they can do this unless they ask and I said, I didn't tell you not to. And so they'll say, okay, what about now? What do I have? When they have all three with the same face, it can be, uh, it can get them somewhere by working backwards, right? So here I would say, so a three has two polar bears each. So it has six polar bears. And for fish, remember we're doing seven minus whatever this number is to figure out the number of fish. So a three is going to have four fish. Four times three is 12. So in this case, we have six polar bears, 12 fish. And it's okay, obviously, to take a moment to do this math in your head. So from there, they can figure out the rules for one, three, and then that can get them something. A five, a five, and a six. We're ignoring that six. We have eight polar bears, four fish. Here we have two polar bears, four fish. No polar bears, no fish. Two polar bears, four fish. It's really easy when there's a lot of even numbers. Two polar bears, four fish. Ooh, two polar bears, 16 fish, right? Because it's six fish, six fish, so that's 12 plus four fish, 16. So that's an interesting one. The ones will often um, kind of throw a wrench in ideas for, for kids. No polar bears, six fish. No polar bears, no fish. Eight polar bears, 10 fish. No polar bears, six fish. Six polar bears, six fish. And last one, let's see if you guys can do it. If you said no polar bears, six fish, you are correct. So once this activity is winding down and most groups have finished and figured out the number of bears and the number of fish, or they're just kind of done with the activity, we all come back together and I put up this, this slide and I ask, what can we take away from this activity? And then I listen to hear what students say. So often they'll just kind of tell me how it went, that it seemed really hard at first, but then they got really into it, that um, they could get the bears, but then they were struggling to figure out the fish. Maybe they didn't know that the, the opposite sides added up to seven, so they learned about that. And then I always end up connecting this to the scientific method because they're really using it intuitively with this activity. They are rolling the dice and they're collecting data they're coming up with a hypothesis. When they think they know how to figure out the number of bears, um, I'll let them test it and that they'll roll. I'll get them to say how many bears they think they have. And then I'll tell them if they're right or wrong. So their hypothesis will either be supported or disproved. Um, and then they can you know, continue to, to do the experiment. So that's always a nice connection. 
um, and all kinds of things can come out at this point. And as I mentioned, during this whole activity, you are really observing. So you're you're moving from group to group and you're talking to kids regularly, um, but you're also making observations, right? You're gonna notice things like who speaks up the most, um, who is really quiet, who maybe is talking to their peers, but they're not gonna talk to you when you come around, who has no patience and is really not interested in this activity at all, who is into the activity, but then is going to try to like sneakily go over to other groups for hints, which by the way, is something that I don't tell them they can't do. And when this comes up in our, our talks afterwards, I say collaboration is actually key in science. Um, when I was doing my master's and working in a lab every week, we would get together with all the members of the lab and share how our research process was going so that we can help each other. So you should be talking to other people. Um, who suggests adjusting the number of dice? Who is frustrated by this whole thing? Who's afraid of making mistakes? Because that's going to point you out to who maybe some of those high achievers, maybe the perfectionists in your class are. Who asks for permission and who doesn't? So this kind of activity can give you so much information about um, individuals, but also group dynamics, um, way more than you get out of kind of the, the standard icebreakers, which is why I love it so much.